This supercomputer is comparable to having 60,000 home computers working together to solve very complex problems. It takes more energy than it's needed to run a small suburb and the storage, the volume of information is akin to every single book that's been printed in every single language over the last 500 years. Its applications are broad. Not only can it give real-time details to firefighters on the front line about the way that bushfires move and how they're responding and reacting, it also can look at other severe weather and help map cyclones as well. It's also doing crucial work in finding out what might be a cure or ways to limit the spread of COVID-19. Since the whole crisis blew up, uh, we quickly pivoted our allocation of resources. Uh, we ran a call within a three-week period across the country for the most, the most uh, potentially impactful research projects that could make a contribution to understanding how that virus works uh, and finding ways either to counter it with a drug or in some other way control uh, the behaviour uh, and allocated uh, 40 million hours of compute time across three projects which are flying now as we speak. The scope of this supercomputer boggles the mind what it can do and how it can do it, but it also has a cultural element. It ties back with the longest ongoing continuous cultures on the planet. It's a marriage of cultures. We've got our conservative computers, our supercomputer with our ancient Ngunnawal language being paired together to bring great good for everyone in Australia. But most importantly, I can see the difference that it will make for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with their health outcomes, education, justice, land rights, everything. It's hoped that this supercomputer will turn its attention to some of the more baffling chronic diseases and conditions affecting first Australians, truly bringing that term of a marriage of cultures to fruition.